Yeah, Holiday Venice is 250 units of project-based Section 8 apartments in Venice, California. And, it, and it's a pretty good example, at least our organizing strategy uh, with Holiday Venice is, is a good example of what, um, you know, why organizing is different or what sets organizing apart from other advocacy or, or civic engagement type of activities. And um, so essentially you have uh, 250 units of project-based Section 8 building. You have a for-profit owner that is saying, okay, I got the, these buildings, I wanna prepay the mortgage, stop the Section 8 program, kick out the poor folks and turn them into luxury condos. And so um, you know, basically what we did is we organized this big, huge rally, got Congresswoman Jane Harmon, all the state senators, assembly people, council people, did this huge march from essentially uh, where the apartments were in Venice and marched all the way down to the beach and did this big rally, had all the press there, then loaded up 200 folks, you know, so basically this press conference and rally is, rah, we're gonna fight, we're gonna, not gonna let them uh, uh, take these buildings away, got the press there, just got great coverage, got everybody's spirit up and got the uh, politicians to come out and stand uh, in support with the tenants, and then we loaded everybody up uh, onto a bus, over 200 people, and four buses, and we drove on a Sunday afternoon right after church to the guy's house and, knocked on his front door, TV cameras, 200 people right on his lawn. He opens the door, he basically said, you sir, we are not gonna let you sell these buildings. We're gonna fight you till the end and we're gonna make sure that everybody here in this neighborhood knows that you're trying to steal our American dream, our homes from our community. And it was absolutely outstanding. And then we had these little wanted posters with the uh, for-profit owner on these wanted posters for stealing the American dream from uh, folks in Venice. Knocked on all of his owners uh, or uh, his neighbor's doors, said, hey, did you know what your uh, SOB of a neighbor's trying to do to our community? Here's what's going on. So you had leaders going out and, and I think what's interesting is not only did we win the issue and it created a lot of media support and HUD came out, uh, the, you know, the Department of Housing and Urban Development said, okay, we're not going to let this guy uh, sell the buildings. There's way too much uh, opposition against it. Uh, and he himself came out and said, fine, I'll withdraw my uh, you know, application uh, to opt out of the program. But not only did we win the issue and that confrontation aspect really brought it to the next level, it, it's the transformation that happens within the community leaders, folks that are normally downtrodden, folks that are normally, uh, you know, cast away, people that are pretty much apathetic, emotionally dead. I'm in a community that's poor, there's no way that we're going to win. And this idea of being able to confront a decision maker, be able to confront something that has had power over you for so long is transforming. And you've seen that over the past couple of years since that action and how the leaders who were a part of this action have grown, who have taken on more responsibility, have fostered relationships and cultivated new leaders within their own communities. So this idea of confrontation, of using strategically, not just going out there and banging pots, but strategically using direct action is something that really, when integrated in a strategic formula that has leadership development, that has uh, power analysis and connecting issues to of the larger uh, sense of community improvement, that direct action piece really helps transform leaders in a way that no other social change mechanism can. And that, that's what's so important about community organizing. Uh, and, and that's why it's important that folks come out and support community organizing.